With rising inflation, bank failures, and massive layoffs across multiple sectors, the future of the economy remains uncertain. It's no wonder the central banks have been getting prepared by stockpiling gold. At ITM Trading, we have spent over 27 years building a team of seasoned researchers and analysts who can help you prepare for any financial crisis. Our experts are ready to provide you with proven strategies to safeguard your wealth and assets in the event of an economic downturn or currency reset, which is frankly inevitable. Don't wait until it's too late. Schedule your free gold and silver strategy call by clicking on the link in the description below. The odds are very high that in the first quarter of next year, we're going to have a big shakeout in all markets, equity markets and commodity markets. So prepare for that shakeout now, then use that shakeout as a trading opportunity to play a cycle that will last no longer than 12 to 18 months, and then be fully out, fully liquid, because then we're going to go into extraordinary difficult times. Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So today I have Simon Hunt back. Uh, this is going to be one of the uh, end of the year or Christmas or holiday interviews. Uh, I, I already did one with uh, John Perez and, and David Morgan last Friday. So uh, Simon, uh, welcome. Thank you for having me. Uh, you're welcome. And uh, before we start, just wanted to show the viewers where they can find uh, Simon's work. Uh, it's uh, simon-hunt.com. So there you go. Analysis and research strategic advisors on the global economy, including geopolitics, China, and the copper industry. And I would say a lot more than just that. So Simon, <laughs> I know it's a difficult question, but uh, just a general question before we get on to some other topics. Uh, what do you see as, maybe this is easier, what do you see as the most important uh, development in the next 12 months or 2024? Uh, I'm not trying to ask you to forecast everything that's going to happen, but what, what do you think uh, could be something that a lot of people are not looking at and it, and it might come out of left field, so to speak, and, and affect uh, everyone? Well, I think we're going to go from the low in the stock markets in the first half of the year to the high in the stock markets at the end of the year and into mid-2025. So how do we get there? I think the markets have overbought the fact that the Fed is going to ease. I think that we will see 10-year treasuries moving up to 55 5.7% in the first quarter. <clears throat> that will cause a big shakeout in the markets, with the S&P saying, having risen to maybe about 4,900 first, then dropping to around 3,000. And that will coincide with the virtually all of the G7 countries being in recession, including America. So you then get the Fed being forced to pivot, A, because of recessionary trends, B, because of the treasury market, and C, because wars uh, in Europe and in the Middle East will be, by then, will be impacting business and household uh, confidence. So then you get the, the pivot, which means that you have a short-term drop in 10-year treasuries. The dollar will start falling sharply. Uh, 
inflation in the second half has a strong resurgence made worse by food prices soaring and by oil supplies being disrupted for various reasons, uh, going to, by the end of the year, to 150 plus. So that really gives us what I call uh, the last hurrah, because inflation will be by certainly the early months of 2025, if not before, global inflation will be over 10%. Um, 10 year treasuries will be yielding probably closer to 13%. And that will be enough to uh, kill uh, the global economy, given how highly leveraged it is. So in a nutshell, that's what we see. Yeah, I, I see. And uh, just wanted to ask you a little bit about going to uh, Asia, first about Japan and how uh, difficult of a job uh, they have there to try to uh, contain inflation. Uh, I saw their GDP shrunk in the thir third quarter and uh, their inflation or CPI is rising by 3% plus, and their uh, policy rate is still negative. Uh, and then uh, if you could also cover China, because uh, I'm seeing a lot of uh, reports from the press that China is now falling into deflation, even though uh, they've had a, a CPI of minus 0.5 year on year, which in my opinion is a good thing if people can buy a little more with their currency. But even then, uh, I've heard that uh, food prices in Hong Kong or China are not going down, they're, they're going up. So maybe if you could cover uh, Japan. Yeah. <clears throat> um, uh, where do we start? <clears throat> I'm actually positive for China for next year. I think we will see a strong cyclical recovery. Interestingly, the deflation actually comes from food prices, not from services. Services are edging up. Um, it's interesting, if you look at the history of China, its open door policy goes on for maybe a decade or so, then they shut the door again. And that's what you see with the private sector. Um, it's very cyclical. Ever since she came into office, the private sector has been hit. Now reading the grapevines, the private sector is being opened up again. They have to, it's too much of the economy. I've just done some work on the, the private, on the general public's holdings of gold. And the conclusion is that the general public households plus Chinese financial institutions now own something around 25,000 tons of gold, which is today valued at about $1.22 trillion equivalent to the economy of Indonesia. If you add in what the various uh, ministries own, including the PLA, which is in round numbers is another 25,000, then you get China's holdings of gold equivalent to Canada's GDP. So I think what is going to emerge within three years, I don't know whether it's next year or the year after, but within three years, 
China is going to say, look how much gold is held by our population. We are actually going to back the RMB with gold, which doesn't mean that it's convertible into gold. It will probably be convertible into gold for um, certain countries. But the fact that it is backed by what the people own in gold is going to be a great cushion to the RMB. So people say um, China's exports are bound to fall. Well, they're not because the growth of their exports is coming from BRI and the Middle East. The deals that have been done between the Gulf countries and China, particularly Saudi Arabia, China is going to be probably the largest supplier of goods into those countries to meet the expansion plans that Saudi in particular has. So you will, well, I've forgotten the figure, but at the moment, um, the Saudi Central Bank holds a surplus of RMB. They can either hedge it on the Shanghai Gold Exchange, or they can buy Chinese bonds. The issue, the interesting point is that within a few years, so much of goods will be imported into uh, Saudi that the surplus RMB that Saudi's central bank will be holding will be pretty small. And that's what I think you will see across the region. So uh, I think on the deflation issue, in the second half of this year, world inflation will be resurging. The dollar will be falling. Food prices will be accelerating. Energy prices will be accelerating. The existing deflation in China won't exist beyond the middle of next year. So China won't be um, in a deflation mode. It'll be in, 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 in a subdued inflation environment, far less than the rest of the world. So bottom line, um, I think we will, for China, I prefer to look at nominal GDP for various reasons rather than the reported real GDP. And this year we've got nominal GDP coming in at 4.2, 4.5%. But I think nominal GDP will probably rise to around 6% next year. That's a nice recovery. Yeah, and uh, the other thing I saw, the, uh, and I made a video about it, uh, I think last week, was that there was a big uh, conference that the Saudis organized in Hong Kong trying to uh, build relationship uh, with Hong Kong so that the a lot of the uh, investment funds in, in China can go through Hong Kong into Saudi Arabia for their projects, like the Neom City projects and all that. And, and it looks like the, the Saudis want to spend up to a trillion dollars on that. And uh, you, you spoke about uh, China China's uh, gold that they've got like 50,000, the whole population, including all the uh, government entities and the central bank. And, and it's, uh, yeah, I've heard that uh, 
number being talked about in many by many other people, even though China only has like officially 2,200. But my my question, 2,200 tons. My question to you is, and this is coming back more to the UK, <laughs> of course, the UK, <laughs> we, we only have 306 tons, even though the Bank of England has uh, they they say safeguard <laughs> five thousand tons for foreign governments um, here in London. Um, yeah, how do you see the UK economy, uh, and especially with the uh, election coming up in the next twelve months? Uh, but also in the long term, you know, I, I personally think, unfortunately, uh, the British public in general they want everything done uh, for them by the government. There isn't, um, you know, that's the mentality. And I think that's why taxes are so high. Um, you know, the highest it's been in 70 years. The economy, we had 0.6% GDP. The only thing that keeps uh, the UK going right now is still the housing market, which they're they're being able to uh, uh, <laughs> keep from dropping further. But, uh, you know, the, the fact that you see interest rates rising again next year, that shouldn't help the UK. So I'll let you uh, talk a little bit about your view of the UK economy. Well, <clears throat> to be honest, I don't follow the UK economy very closely. In the big picture, it's become insignificant in my view. And I'm afraid to say America is just another, I'm sorry, UK is just an American state. Um, so I found it very interesting that Andrew Bailey, the Bank of England, is, is stating no early cut in interest rates. And I think that is, I may well be wrong, but I think it's a lead indicator that you may find that this week the Fed raises rates. Um, my reasoning is Powell does not like to be dictated to by the market. And I think he's going to give the market a lesson. That's my wild guess. No informed, nothing informed about it. Just looking at things as they are. That would really put the cats amongst the pigeons <laughs> if he raised rates. Sure would. <laughs> The uh, interesting thing that you said about the UK, and unfortunately, I think you're right, it's insignificant in the scheme of things, even though uh, in foreign policy wise, the UK seems to want to punch above its weight. Uh, I remember watching uh, uh, one of the news reporters here in the UK asking a, a Chinese ambassador to the UK or some official uh about the importance of uh, the relation, importance of the UK to China, and he went on to just say, you know, uh, basically what you said. He said the UK is insignificant. You know, we build more cars than everyone. We do this and this. Yes, we want to have a good relationship with the UK, but uh, yeah, and that's about it. Uh, and talking about the UK, uh, uh, just want to switch over to. Argentina, because there's a lot of uh, speculation, and uh, I, I guess some people are kind of surprised that he was able to win the election uh, in Argentina, Millet. What, what's your view on Millet and how it will impact the BRICS, if it will have any impact? Well, it was a, uh, a stunning victory. The fact that he wants to dollarize the Argentinian economy, it's basically you're going from the fat into the far, given what's going to happen to the dollar between the middle of, middle of next year and for the next 10 years, is going downhill, downhill big time. We have the dollar index essentially halving in value by 2030. Um, the other big question is, um, yes, his basic policies are the correct ones, but will he be able to see them through? 
That is the big question, and I don't have an answer. Yeah. So any uh, any final words for the viewers as we go into the uh, uh, holiday or Christmas season and uh, into next year? How How can they really try to navigate these uncertain, turbulent times? Well, I think... <clears throat> I think it is, the odds are very high that in the first quarter of next year, we're going to have a big shakeout in all markets, equity markets and commodity markets. So prepare for that shakeout now, then use that shakeout as a trading opportunity to play a cycle that will last no longer than 12 to 18 months, and then be fully out, fully liquid, because then we're going to go into extraordinary difficult times. Thank you very much, uh, Simon, and uh, I wish you uh, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And the same to you and your family, and enjoy the visit to switzerland oh thank you and uh, enjoy uh, where are you going simon you, you... i'm going actually to bangkok oh great enjoy enjoy your visit to bangkok thank, thank you thank, thank you. you very much you're welcome cheers cheers